You suck, your business sucks, and you'll never be successful. How many people paid you five grand? You never lied to anybody? Okay, real quick. Anything you see in here? What? It's over, bro. Mm. What's your belief system? You're married, yes? To a woman, or you let your wife wear pants? When I ask you for something and you don't give it to me, are you knowing that you're lying to me? Lying? You Real cannot fast. move being this comfortable. But you be in the crib and your drawers just like. Hey, yo. My job is to make you fail. My job is to make you quit. My job is to make you cry. But if you survive it, success is on the other side. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, David. How you doing? I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm amazing. You're an entrepreneur, yes? Yes, I am. How long have you been an entrepreneur? Ah, my goodness, since 2001. So, a bit. couple decades. I mean, a, a couple since. What's that? A decade is 10 years, right? Yeah. A couple decades. A couple decades. Good. How's it been going? Um, it, it went well. I semi retired from my acupuncture practice in 2018. Oh, wow. And now I've been doing this work called creation. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going slow. Um, How long have you been doing this? creation uh since 2013 so oh so, so about a decade yeah so, so when did you when did you stop the acupuncture practice 2018 oh god so, so you're doing, doing both for a long while. yeah they were simultaneously doing both work got it ahead my main thing was why people didn't heal mm -hmm. that was the main question and so Getting to answer that question, it led me into mind-body work, led me into medical intuition, learning how to look deeper at what was causing them to be ill. Mm -hmm. And then it just organically morphed into what I call now creation that I do with people because it's about who the person is, what the work they're here to do, and basically what they're here to create. Gotcha. And so them not creating that is making them ill. And one of the things that do make people ill, so... I'm a little confused as to what you do though. Okay, so the work that I do called creation, I do, it's primarily intuitive and spiritual work that I do with people to find out what stops them from being who they need to be. So most people try to lump me into coaching, but I don't have people reframing what it is. I actually look at a person and say, okay, I could intuitively see who you are, what you're about, and this is where you're stuck at. And then I work with them through the process of getting them unstuck from that and then work with them to the point where they can see this is who I am. This is what I'm here to do. And, you know, that usually frees them up and they feel happier. They heal. They make more money. So there's a lot of benefits they get from it. But it's the concept sounds hard to explain, but it's also simple. Um, if All right, so hold on. Let me ask you yeah. another question. Let me ask you like a completely different question. Okay. What do you do? What do I do? I help people find out who they are and what they're here to do. Good. How do you do that? Um, I do it because I could intuitively see what they are to do. How do you do that? How do I do that? When someone comes and sees me, I actually see around them. It looks as if they have... Um, you know, on the computer, when you have pop-ups come up, when you're looking at something at the screen, when people walk in, that's what I see around them. Like the first time I saw so you. So as soon as I walk in, I you can see stuff about me. Yeah, it's right around you. So you're a psychic. All the time. Hmm? Psychic almost? Yeah, you could call it that. Do you use the little cards? No, I've never used cards. Cards work? I've never used them. I just see. You want me to tell you what I saw when I saw you? Tell me what you saw when you saw me. I saw you doing an academy for boys. Mm. Like, yeah, teaching young boys to get them out of that whole school to pipeline um, jail from school to jail system. I saw you working with young boys with an academy that you were going to create an academy to help them get out of that system by using entrepreneurship. So when you first did that thing with Neil, I said, yes, he's doing it. Mm. Yeah, but that's the first thing I saw. You're, you're on when's your the first path. Thing, when's the first time you saw me do that? Um, when I met you in January. Of this year? Came, yeah, when I came to the podcast. You, you were see, my inspiration. But you didn't see any of the YouTube videos like I was in schools in 2018? No, first time I saw your video was Social Proof where it was with you and Donnie like, during the pandemic. Right, I, so I mean I was in schools before. Never saw that one. But you saw it. 
Yeah, I just saw okay. it as soon as I met you. I was like, yeah, he needs to do an academy with young boys teaching them entrepreneurship. You're a psychic. I guess you could call me that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to call you a psychic. You could call me a psychic. Mm. Do psychics make money? Oh, yeah. Good money. Do you make good money as a psychic? I don't do that too much. Because that's not my primary focus. I thought that's what you said you do. I do that, but that's not my primary focus. My what primary focus is to see what's stopping somebody from succeeding, what's stopping them from healing. That's my primary focus. That's just what we were talking about, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't do it or you do it? Yes, I do it. But the first thing you were talking about when you see like the pop-ups and all that kind of stuff yeah. versus helping people heal, that's the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's just where you're focusing your attention. You are extremely confused as an entrepreneur. Mm. At this point, yes. It was easier when I did an acupuncture clinic. That was straightforward. Yeah. So you can see what other people need to do, but not yourself? Not really. I think it's that I overthink what I need to do and I don't do it. It's more on the execution that I find that I struggle with because I get too many ideas of what to do. Mm. I don't know if I trust that. Okay. Especially if you knew it was a guarantee. If, if you're telling me to pay you to see what you see about me and what I need to do, mm -hmm. if I know that information, you're saying this is a guarantee. It will happen for sure. Is that what you're saying? Like you I see it. Proof of it, yeah. Okay. What would you plus years, yeah. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail at it? You know, that's a hard question. Not really. It, uh, it's it's a hard question because I think I'm too much of a perfectionist. Mm. You know, like I, I could see what I need to do. It's it, that's yeah. not the issue. But then it's like, how do I do it? How do I, you know, I nitpick at it too much. Don't you think it's important to um, sell someone something based on your own evidence? Mm -hmm. But you're not doing that because you don't have evidence yourself. It could appear that you just created some sort of uh, mystical thing. Like I can tell you, you know what I see on you? I know what I see on your life. Okay. I see bowling balls. Okay. I'm t in the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. you create bowling balls. Mm -hmm. And that's the business that you need to be into. And someone will be able to take that information and they go down this whole path or journey of bowling balls. <laughs> and really, it's not like anyone told you. You told you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we came up with at the moment. It doesn't quite work that way, but I get where you're going. Tell me how's it, how it works. Um, if I don't, do, okay, let me ask you this. Okay. If I don't do the academy for boys, mm -hmm. am I going against God's will? No, you have a choice. You mm. still have free will and you still have a choice. Um, so you could have saw anything. I could have. And but what that's does, what I saw with you. Yeah, for sure. But I'm trying to see what qualifies your vision for that. Okay. Especially if. I have a different vision for myself. Mm -hmm. Or I, I promise you, I, was, uh, I knew this young lady and I never dated her. But she told me that she knows without a shadow of a doubt that she is my wife Ooh. and I am her husband. That's wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. That's what I would call that. But that's what I hear when you say that to me, that you see I'm supposed to be doing something. It's almost f like false profiting. Okay. I could see where you're coming from with that. But then, like you say, you always talk about the social proof. And the proof is in the pudding. Uh, and all I could do is say all the cases that I've done, thousands of them over the years. Thousands of them? Thousands. Over 20 years of doing this work with people. Okay. You did so say you've only been doing it for 10 years, though. That's what you told creation. me. Creation. But prior to that, I was doing medical intuition. Explain that to me. Okay. So medical intuition. And before you say it, though, just keep in mind, mm -hmm. 
It sounds like something I've seen people go to jail for. So, <laughs> <laughs> it could be a malpractice. And somebody that you was like, hey, my medical intuition tells me this is what we need to perform on you. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I love it, love it. No. <laughs> that, that's a good one. Um. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's dangerous. David. That's a good one. No, I don't. I don't do surgery or anything invasive okay. like that. So um, I'm safe with that. But medical intuition is the ability to see, like I could see inside somebody's body if they're having something wrong with them. So, for instance, like someone comes in and they're having, we say tach tachycardia. Mm -hmm. How could I tell they're having tachycardia the minute they walk in the room? My heart might start racing. And I might ask them, hey, what's going on? Out of your all the things that someone could have, you could pull out that they have tachycardia? Yes. I, I don't. You don't believe it. I could do it. I could, I could give you names. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. Do you own Sage? Do I own Sage? You have some in your house? Yeah, but it doesn't work that well. It doesn't work that well for what? Sage is not one of the best things to do. If you're thinking of negative stuff out of your house, most people are like, Sage, <laughs> get the negative That's stuff the out of your I'm house. <laughs> yeah, Sage. So, what works really better good. than Sage? Garlic and pepper. Like on vampire movies? No. No, you actually use garlic, pepper. Um, there's some other herbs that you could use, but that actually works a whole lot better than okay, sage. Okay, okay, explain this to me. <laughs> How does garlic and pepper rid your house of demons? Okay, smells. It's really about the smell. Seriously. It's more about the smell than anything else. You're building your business on this premise. No, right? I don't do that part of work. That's okay. the part that I least like to do in my work. The whole house clearing and house cleaning stuff, I only do it if the person is already my client, but that's not something that I offer to do. But if you get a client, you'll do it. If I have a client and they need that, yes, but that's not something that I go out to the public and advertise doing because it's, it's a pain in the butt. How does garlic, how do you know when it worked? Huh? How do you know when it worked? Because you could know when they're gone. Seriously. I go into places where people said, well, I saged my house. Or I had somebody come by and sage the house and, you know, do all this stuff, sprinkle stuff around their house. And I go in there and I said, yeah, the thing's still standing over there. And you can see you the thing. You have to be able to see it. Yeah, if you can't see it, how are you going to clear something you can't see? And you can see the thing. Yes. Okay. I'm okay. Just, out. just out of, not, not really. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> It's I, interesting. I don't think you thought it was going to go this way, David. Is there anybody? I'm just trying to understand your business model. <laughs> That's, well, only if I have a client, they come to me, they may come to me because let's say they came to me because they have lower back pain. Mm -hmm. I find out the reason they have lower back pain is because, you know, they have a lot of energy in their house. That might be the reason for their lower back pain. So when I go to their house, I see, okay, that's what hold it is. Hold on, so hold on, hold on, hold on. It could go from one thing to the next. We day could day. have lower back pain because there's an energy in the house. An entity in their house. There's an entity in the house mm -hmm. giving me lower back pain. But if I cook with garlic and pepper, no. or is it, or is it just putting? Not cook with it. You actually burn it. Where'd you get that from? Mm -hmm. Where'd you learn that? Where did garlic I learn and that? paper. Yeah, and this is the first time I've I've been able to have a conversation yeah. with uh with someone of this belief. Okay, it's, it's some of it is cultural. I am from the Caribbean. Okay. So some of it I learned culturally and some of it I learned because it was spiritually shown to me what to do. What's your belief system? What's your belief? I believe that there is a God, a source of all creation. And I believe that everybody has a certain spiritual gift. This is mine. Mm. Some people have the gift of teaching. Some people have the gift of ministering. This is mine. What is it about garlic and pepper see. that rids your house of demons? The smell. They don't like that. They find the smell offensive and they leave. That's the best. You know, it's, it's, it's like it burns. It's offensive to them and they'll leave. But that's not for everyone. 
It's specific based on who you're dealing with, David. But this isn't a part of your business model, though. No, that's the part I least like to do. Okay. Only it's by, hard work. Only if you're, yeah, it's a lot of work. Because you got to find them. And you got you to go in there. You got to see it. You hit them so, with the garlic? Sometimes you got, no, you, you burn it. You just burn it? You burn well, it. By, okay, real quick. Anything you see in here? <laughs> if you point it something. I'll <laughs> If you Let pointed something. Yeah. Out. <laughs> no, this look, I have to look around. Okay, okay, <laughs> gotcha. You know, like I'm like a New York City taxi. I'm only on duty when I'm getting paid. You know, okay. like the light goes on. So. For sure. <laughs> For nothing right Otherwise, now. Otherwise, the light is off. <laughs> For nothing right now, we're clear. No, you're clear. Okay. Your space feels good. If something was up with your place, how you could feel it, okay. I could tell people how they could feel something's off with their place. When they walk in there, it feels heavy. You know, mm. like you feel, you ever walk into a, a, a place and then it's like, God, every time I go here, I feel heavy. Mm. I feel like something's weighing me down. I feel tired. I'm exhausted. And then you walk out and you feel okay again. But the minute you go into that place, that's one of the first signs. You feel heavy or tired or you feel drained all the time. I think that's just anxiety about the environment. But anyway, mm. so tell me about your business. Okay. So the business is creation. Um, what I'm doing with the business is bringing it online to do online courses because what I have been doing. And you've been doing it for, since 2013. That was okay, the first you. time I taught a class, but it was live. It was yeah. within a room full of people. Um, and I've been teaching that so far. I've trained like 125 people how to do this particular technique that I do. Okay. Do you have clients now? Yeah. How many? Uh, it varies. It varies from week because I haven't really been focused on that part of my business. I've been more focused on the course creation part. How do you make money? I make money because people call me and people refer people to me. I've never advertised this 20 plus years I've been in business. It's all been referrals. I was known in Orlando as if you have something, if you have a patient and you can't figure out what's wrong with them, whether it's an MD, a chiropractor, another acupuncturist, send them to a Kia. She'll do something weird with them. It'll clear it up and they'll be straight. That's what my reputation was. And I was reminded of that because somebody referred somebody to me and they said, I was talking to this other acupuncturist that I've known for years. And they said, oh, I'm working with Akia. And they said, oh, Akia, yeah. She was like the last resort. You send people to her when you couldn't figure out what was going on with them. This is not a placebo? Mm-mm. -mm. Placebo You kind of got to be really into good. this. You kind of got to be into the thing. You know what I mean? I, I disagree, David, because I've worked with animals. You heal Cows, them? Cows. You heal them? Dogs, fishes, yes. There's definitely a target market that you got. Yeah. You kind of got to believe in this stuff. You gotta That's like, why I said I work with animals. Or it's not kinda, a belief system. Because animals don't know. Animals don't have any particular belief, but, you know, I've worked, you know, people have brought their sick animals to me and I've worked with them, find out, because intuitively you could look at an animal and say, okay, they communicate, everything in this world communicates. You know, like people that are really good with plants, they're good with plants because they could communicate with that plant. How much do you charge? Right now I charge five grand. To do what? Um, for a series of sessions with me. At the end of it, they're... I free of demons or no like i said demons is the least thing oh, gotcha. that i okay. like to do gotcha. David. listen up okay, okay. <laughs> seriously but you free them from their self i free them from wherever they're blocked like a lot of times people think people are like okay in my profession in medicine people always say patients are lying to them that's that's how doctors look at you guys all right, you come to them, whatever therapy they're giving you is not working, and they like to blame the patient. Sorry, but real quick, how many people paid you five grand? Five grand over the years? This month. This month, two. Two. Yeah, which is low for me. Really? Yeah. Normally on the average, when I had my practice, I was seeing five patients a day somewhere in that ballpark. That's a three-day work week. Can you though. call one of them? Yeah. Let's see if they'd be cool being on the show. Oh I would love to hear. Let me see. I'm, who can I call? I'm very interested in seeing their perspective and what you did. If you did what you're saying, 
I don't even know what I would think, but I'm interested. Who could I Two people with? this month paid five grand for the healing work. Mm-hmm. And were they healed? Of the initial thing that they came for. I need, I want to know. Yeah, whatever their chief complaint is, that's usually easy to take care of. To me, the hard work is getting them to the point where they could really start to create what they came here to create. That's the difficult part with people. Mm. It's not getting them over whatever, you know, block they have. The blocks are easy because I could see what the block is. So it's like, hey, we could remove this block. But what's just like with myself, what's I know my block? what I got to do. Look, what's my block? Look at me. Okay. My face. I was supposed to contact somebody. What yeah. You okay. Okay. You call him. <laughs> okay. I don't know what my block is. <laughs> you want to know what your block is? Don't you okay, want to know what David, is? Let's Not let's David. do this. Let's do this. Let's find out what your block is. We talk all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let me see what your block is, David. Seriously. Okay. Let me let me just tune into you because see I wasn't doing that. So let me just tune into you first. Okay, so I just am going to begin talking. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is family time. That's that's two things, and I'll, I'm just telling you what I'm receiving okay. from. So you like to give information by talking. So I'm here in family time, and I'm just asking you some questions as to what does that mean for you, family and time. You're asking You're, me what is family and time? No, no, no. I'm, I'm asking, okay, the best question that I have ever gotten was from this young man. He was a 19-year-old pre-med student. And he says, okay, what you just said to me is true, but, and you tell me that I'm saying it to you, how am I saying it to you? Mm -hmm. And I had to, I had to think about, like, how am I getting this information from him? And I said, it looks like you have this holographic projection of yourself, and it's that part of yourself that's giving me the information. Mm. So when I tune into someone, I realize I'm looking at this part of their energy field where that information is. So yours is family and time. It has to do with how you're building your business and the difficulty that you're having is how you fit family and time into your business. We see, this is what I know about you. I know you're already busy because you know, you're flying here, you're going here, that I know about you. And it's easier to really work with people you don't know anything about them because it's clear yeah. the information you're receiving. But it's like, how do you fit your family? And it's not like quality time. It, it feels like I'm getting it more like your wife. They feel like there's a sense of neglect that they're not coming as a priority because you know, you're doing the man thing. You're like building this empire, but then the family and time is the struggle that I do see how that fits in to everything that you're doing. Um, and how do you satisfy that? How, how, especially your wife, how do you satisfy her need for your attention and your time. Cause you're always busy. You're like, go, go, I got this, I got that. And then how do you separate all of those things out from the time that you want? And it's very important to you for, to be a very good husband, a very good dad. That's very important to you. But how do you, like, how do you manage that? How does that actually fit in? And just figuring out where that balance is for that. That is, is every really married important. entrepreneur in the world. Mm hmm. That's true. But, that's, <laughs> but every married well, entrepreneur doesn't really focus true. on that. Yeah, but I mean, that's not my priority. I, well, my, my my family is a priority, and I'm home every day at like five o'clock, which I could be out grinding. But I'm, Zell, I'll tell you here, I'm I'm out pretty much every day about four o'clock. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I bring my kids here to work yeah, with but me. What I'm getting is. Uh, it's more along the lines of the wife. Only because I said I bring my no, kids no. with me. I'm just more, no, no, I'm just saying. But it's, me, okay, it's family but what you're what you do, the wife and what the you're kids. doing now is that's how you build your business, and that's why people pay you. Mm -hmm. And that's not everything. I mean, we could. Go you know, you got to find a certain group of people. 
Because I think we could fit everything. I, if I read you, mm -hmm. based on who you are, maybe uh, if I talk to you for a little while, I'll see some issues. Yeah. I could say, well, there's a little confusion in your business, in your direction. You're having a hard time with your messaging. And there are certain things that you want out of life, and maybe you feel like you're closing in on time. And you think you're running out of time. You can't keep up with these kids, these younger folk. I could say that, and you could either say yes or no. You could deny it or say, yo, you're right. And there might be some truth to it. But a person would have to think, be looking for something. The person would have to be looking for you to have the answer for them. And then they pull a piece out and say, that was it. You're right. And then you tell them how to fix that. But like we got our own issues that maybe especially as an entrepreneur, you may be having a challenge fixing. I agree. I agree with that, that I do have a challenge fixing certain things. I know, because I'm a psychic. Mm. I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I see your play there. But, but here's the cool thing. Here's the cool thing. Yeah. And I'm going I'm to I'm wrap this up, because you did really, really good. Mm -hmm. It's It seems placebo-ish, but there are some people that will believe, because they've tried everything else. They will believe that if... You bring some garlic and pepper into my house. <laughs> That's just one of the things I use, Dave. Don't, don't. I don't no, want but to I'm saying there's an, audience, pepper, there, <laughs> there's an audience of people that will believe that because there are people that as soon as they break up with whoever and that person moves out, they, they get the sage cooking. Yeah. They're going to exactly. clean the house. Yeah. Wipe down which, the walls and everything. Which is a form of idolatry, though. I idolatry in what sense because you're thinking that this physical thing gives a spiritual result mm, idolatry oh. is is idolatry is using anything that is doing the work of whatever your creator is actually did you know that and there's actually a um a prophecy in the bible that the cross is actually an idol. That's true. People hold up the cross, then, or in their churches, they use the cross as somewhat of a protection, and they'll pray to the cross, but mm -hmm. you're not supposed to pray to anything. I agree. Like that. So but they then, use it as an idol. But then how would you explain medicine that would be considered idol? No, the, no, the medicine actually performs a physical thing. Like if you drink alcohol, you get drunk. There's like something you're putting in your body. Mm -hmm. Or I take a pill, like... Um, to lower my blood pressure, I take the pill and my blood pressure is lowered because there's a chemical reaction in there that works in my body that creates that. But this is more and belief if, stuff. Yeah, but what if you take the pill and it doesn't lower it? It's the wrong pill. Hmm? It's the wrong pill, but that's why I'm saying that's why people- do But it's going to be, it's going to have some sort of reaction. Yeah. That's not, that's not mental. Anything in your body has a physical reaction to it. You put in your body. It's gonna have some sort of reaction to it. Okay, so then what I look at, when I look at, the reason why I came to this conclusion was that when I was 19, I studied acupuncture. And acupuncture is based only solely on energy. So you have a headache and I'll stick a needle in your big toe. And people are like, but my headache's up here, why are you putting a needle in my big toe? But it's about the energy that's in your It's body. not necessarily, in it. so yeah. my dad was an iridologist. Iridologist, yeah. So you can look into your eye mm -hmm. and there are yeah, certain things mm -hmm. in your eye that dictate what's going on in your body. Like there, I don't know, one of the veins in your eye or something like that might be a little thicker, but it's, it's connected to something in your body. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not like a, this is what I believe. There's, there's something in your feet that are connected to your brain. Mm -hmm. So somebody, um, they had like surgery, but they wound up having a headache after the surgery mm -hmm. and they wound up dying. But the surgery was somewhere else in the body. But there's a blood clot there somewhere. Yeah. So in your eyes, you can see like what's going on in your body. But it's mm -hmm. not a spiritual thing. It's yeah. But then you're looking at it that it is a spiritual thing. And what are we surrounded by? What's your answer? 
Okay. Spirits. We, we're surrounded by a lot. This is a vast universe. Yeah. We're not the only things in it. As you build your business, you're going to have to play on a certain belief. So, I mean, you're going to have to play on a certain belief. Or I think all would, businesses are on a belief. Though. Say it again? I think every business plays on a belief. That you're right about. Mm -hmm. That you're right about. Yeah. You did good. <laughs> if you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.